<coughs> Jacob goes to Egypt. So Israel set out with all that was his, and when he reached Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob, I, I am here, he replied. I am God, the God of your father, he said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again, and Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. So, Jacob probably was having some worries, some doubts, like, okay, we were supposed to inherit the land of Canaan, now I'm going to Egypt. <coughs> And God's just like, oh, no, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Then Jacob left Beersheba, and Israel's sons took their father, Jacob, and their children and their wives in the carts that Pharaoh had sent to transport them. They also took with them their livestock and possessions they had acquired in Canaan, and Jacob and all his offsprings were sent to Egypt. He took with him to Egypt his sons and grandsons, his daughters and granddaughters, all his offspring. There, now these were are the names of the sons of Israel. Jacob and his descendants <coughs> who went to Egypt. Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, the sons of Reuben, Hanchuch, Polo, Hezron, and Carmi, the sons of Simon, Jemul, Jemin, Obadai, Jachin, Zehor, and Sholahul, the son of a Canaanite woman. So now only Joseph bringing in um, the Gentile, a Gentile. So, it's semi, semi. Anyway, the sons of Levi, Gershon, Korath, and Mira, Mira. The sons of Judah, Ur, Onan, Shelah, Preza, and Zeha. But Ur and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. It doesn't have. It's I mean, like it. It just says died in the land of Canaan. It doesn't say how. It doesn't have to say how. If you knew the previous story, you already knew how. Duh. <laughs> it doesn't have to say how. Why does it have to say how? <sighs> this is not evidence of later development. Especially in a genealogy. Because why would you make up a genealogy for all these people? It just doesn't make sense. <coughs> anyway, Hezron and the sons of Prez, Hezron and Hemel. So the line of the Messiah continues. Anyway, the sons of Issachar, Tola, Pelo, Jashub, and Simran. The sons of Zebulun, Shered, Elin, Elon, something, and Jahil. These were the sons Leobor, Jacob, in Pandan Era, A Aram, besides his daughter Daya, Diana. These sons and daughters of his were three, three in all. The sons of Gad, Zephon, Hegai, Shunai, Esbon, Urai, Aradoi, and Ariel. The sons of Asher. Emanai, Shavai, Shavai, and Brunai. Their sister was Sarah. Sari. Sarah. And yes, I don't know how to pronounce the names correctly. Wow. It's like names and words I never heard before. I don't know how to pronounce. It always gets me whether people are like, you pronounced this wrong. How could 
you possibly protect? Not everyone knows every little detail about your culture, okay? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, you do. You grew up in it. Duh. The sons of Baca, Heber and Melakai, Melako, these were the children born to Jacob. By Zeph Zelpha, who Le Leban had given to his daughter Leah, sixteen in all. <clears throat> the sons of Jacob's wife, Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, in Egypt. Manasseh and Ephraim were born to Joseph by Esther, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. <coughs> and On was a major cult site. Well, yeah, a major cult site of ours. Anyway, for. That's ours. Right. Anyway, yeah, whatever. For the Egyptian god at Ra. Which does not relate to a man in any way, shape, or form because that's not how languages work. Anyway. <coughs> so, Joseph marries a pagan, probably converts Gentile. He brings a Gentile in to the family of Israel. Just saying. A certain uh, the person who's going to bring a whole lot of gent former pagan worshipping Gentiles in. The sons of Benjamin, Bella, Becker, Aspel, Gehar, Neman, Ai, Ros, Mipim, Hepim, and Edred. You know, I think if they would just make up these names, they would at least be like... You know, the father of this great war, you know, just list them and moves on. These were the sons of Rachel who bore, who was born to Jacob, 14 in all, who were born to Jacob, yeah. The sons of Dan, Hushmish, eh, Hush, M. The sons of Nephetal, Jezreel, Ganai, Jezzy, Jezer, Shilman. These were the sons born to Jacob by Beha, who Leban had given to his daughter Rachel. Seven in all. All those who went to Egypt with Jacob, <coughs> those who were his direct descendants, not counting. Ding, his son's wives numbered 66 persons. With the two sons who had born, been born to Joseph, there's a little note, so two to the nine children. Okay, that's a big difference between the so two to who had been born to Joseph in Egypt, the members of Jacob's family, which went to Egypt, were 70 in all. Oh, wait, just another note. Hebrew, see also Exodus 1, 5, foot, and footnote, Septuagint, and also see Acts 7, 14, 75. Are these numbers accurate? They don't have to be. Why? Because the ancients loved ideal numbers. Loved them. Way more than they loved accuracy. They didn't care about accuracy. They wanted ideal numbers. <coughs> so these are probably some ideal numbers. Because seven is the number of completion in... Look how complete it is. That's 70 people. See, all are going down. Here's a seven. So, yeah, that doesn't make the rest of the history symbolic. That doesn't make it any less accurate. It's just a very common tradition done by ancient peoples. 
That's it. It's not a contradiction. Anyway. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get direction, directions from Joseph. When he arrived in the reason of Joseph, Joseph had his chariot made ready and went to Joseph to meet his father Israel. And as soon as Joseph appeared before him, he threw his arms around his father and wept for a long time. Think, think about what happened to Joseph. You haven't seen your father in how many years? Yeah. <laughs> Israel said to Joseph, I, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen for myself that you are still alive. <coughs> then Joseph <coughs> said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and, seek, and speak to Pharaoh and say to him, My brothers and my father's household, who were living in the land of Canaan, have come to me. The men are shepherds, they tend livestock, and they have brought long, along their flocks and their herds, and everything they own. When Pharaoh calls you in and asks, what is your occupation? Why would Pharaoh do that if Joseph already told... It's just a common courtesy. It's all those are other reasons. When Pharaoh, yeah, you should answer, your servants have tended livestock from our boyhood on, just as our father did. Then you will be allowed to settle in the region of Gashem, for all shepherds are detestable to Egyptians. To the Egyptians. Why would this be? Why? Well, why a lot of things in ancient Egypt? The Nile. The Nile is the source of all food in Egypt, because it's in ancient Egypt, because it's the only source of water. What do sheep do? Eat a lot and require a lot of food. And shepherds usually have tens of thousands of sheep. Very simply, Egypt doesn't want all that food going to just the sheep. Especially... Uh, in a famine year. <laughs> so, from the Egyptian perspective, it's like, oh, you think your sheep are more reported than us? Us humans? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, where do Israelites, where do Israel settle? Where does Israel settle? In the Nile Delta, where there's plenty, <laughs> plenty of food. Plenty of stuff. Anyway, Joseph went and told Pharaoh, "My father and brothers are with my fathers and, bro and brothers with their flocks and herds and everything they own. Have come to the land, come from the land of Canaan, and now and are now in Geshon. He chose five of his brothers to prevent, present them before Pharaoh. Like here, here's my brothers. Some of the, I mean, some of them had to take care of the flocks still." I don't it doesn't say which five. If this was just made it up by the king of Judah, wouldn't he be like, Oh yeah, I went before Pharaoh <coughs> and negotiated this wonderful deal. You know, Pharaoh treated me as my uh, ancestor as royalty already. He said you will be a... A great father of many kings. No, it's just like five went. Which five? Who knows? <laughs> Pharaoh asked the brothers, What is your occupation? Patient. Your servants are shepherds, they replied to Pharaoh. Just as our fathers were. They also said to him, we have come to live here a while because the famine is severe in Canaan and your servants' flocks have no pasture. So now, please let your servants sell in Goshen. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come to you, and the land of Egypt is before you. Settle your, 
father and your brothers in the best part of the land, let them live in Goshan. And if you know, if any of the among them are speci with special ability, put them in charge of my own livestock. Yes, the Egyptians did have some livestock like cows. You know, Pharaoh's dream about cows. The, the thing is, you usually have smaller groupings of cows. <laughs> and plus, it's it, it's okay when we do it. <laughs> kind of mentality, too. Um, Pharaoh said to Joseph, Yeah, oh wait, yes, I read it. Anyway, then Joseph brought his father, Jacob, in the presence of and presented him before Pharaoh, like, this is my father. After Jacob blessed Pharaoh, this is a common thing, or greeted, this is a common thing, did, yeah. Pharaoh asked him, how old are you? <laughs> oh, I imagine this, like, old man just on this pad, bald, wrinkles, is just, How old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The years of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty. My years have been few and difficult, and they do not equal the year of the pilgrimage pilgrimage of my fathers. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh, or said farewell, and went out from his presence. Again, idealized numbers because, yeah. Anyway, so Joseph settled his father and his brothers in Egypt and gave them property in the best part of the land, the district of Ramses, as Pharaoh directed. Joseph also provided his father and his brothers all and all his father's household with food according to the number of their children. Makes sense. Also, yes, District of Ramses. Why would it be called the District of Ramses? Because that's just what it was known as by the time of the Moses is just, just updating stuff. Or it's a scribal update. Yeah. So, ever wondered how Joseph actually handled the famine? <laughs> that's next Saturday. You can go watch the previous videos of where we've gone through the book of Genesis section by section and look into some details like where the Garden of Eden is. Where could it be? Is Sam and Gomorrah tell of whatever it was? I don't know. North of. Been, has it been found? Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, see you then.